Hello, welcome to Bits and Biology. My name's Liz, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the games I played in March. Uh, mostly ones that are relevant to the channel, but a few that aren't. All right, welcome back. So in March, I had 108 plays of 45 different games. 11 of those are relevant to the channel, and I will talk about all 11 of those. And 15 of the 45 were new to me, but not all of which I'm gonna be talking about. Uh, I do wanna start with my sort of top 10 of those 45 different games. I'll go through them relatively quickly because only two of them are uh, sort of relevant to this channel. I do have timestamps in the description below, so if you want to skip to any particular point in the video, uh, I encourage you to do that. All right, so my top 10 games of March. I'm gonna start with number 10 with Cat in the Box. This is a game designed by, I'm gonna apologize right now because I'm gonna pronounce a few of these names wrong, um, Muniyuki Yokuchi uh, with artwork by Osamu Inoue. It was published by Bezier Games and in well, I have the deluxe edition. That was published in 2022. That's the one by Bezier Games. It was originally published in 2020. And this is a fun little trick-taking game. So I've played this uh, only at four players. And this is one of our recent favorites, actually. So this is a trick-taking game where the cards visually are all the same color. And they have numbers. I think it's one through, in the four-player game, I think it's one through six. And when you play a card, uh, you designate the color. And um, really fun little game, very unique mechanism there. Uh, coming in at number nine, Alhambra. This is a classic, it was published in 2003 by Queen Games and designed by Dirk Hen with artwork um, by a handful of people actually. Uh, Jorg Osselborn, Joe Hartwig, Patricia Limberger, and Christoph Tisch. Uh, so if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes because I can't memorize all of these. <laughs> um, so Alhambra is a really fun tile placement game where you have cards that are worth different denominations of money and you use those to buy tiles to place in your Alhambra. And it scores at three different points in the game and you're scoring based on which colors of buildings you have and then also the length of your wall that surrounds your Alhambra. Um, quite a fun game. Very uh, beginner friendly, I think, that one. Uh, even more beginner friendly, coming in at number eight, is Carcassonne. This is one of my mom's very favorite games. Um, this is a tile placement game. It was designed by Klaus, uh, Klaus Jurgen Reed with artwork by Marcel Grober and Anne Patsky and published by Z-Man Games uh, in 2021. Well, I have the, okay, wait, I should say, I have the 20th anniversary edition. That was published in 2021. Carcassonne itself was actually originally published in 2000, and it's gone through several iterations, and I don't even know how many expansions. We have actually mixed in a few expansions, um, but we really only play with the, I think it's Traders, oh, I can't remember, and I didn't write it in my notes, Traders and something. Um, anyway, very fun tile placement game. Coming in at number seven is Merv, The Heart of the Silk Road. This is a worker placement, sort of a worker placement game, a set collection, and it also has contract fulfillment in it. Uh, it was designed by Fabio Lapiano with artwork by a uh, very famous Ian O'Toole. It was published in 2020 by Osprey Games. Um, I've played this at two player and solo and really like it uh, both ways. This is a heavy, heavier Euro game. Uh, I think it takes, I don't have the box here with me, but I, I wanna say it comes in at around 90 minutes. Uh, really fun, really fun game, and the artwork is phenomenal. Uh, coming in at number six is another classic, Seven Wonders. This is a drafting and set collection game designed by Antoine Bauza with artwork by Miguel Coimbra and published by Repos Productions in uh, well, the version that I have is the second edition, so that was published in 2020. Uh, Seven Wonders itself was originally published in 2010. Coming in at number five, Clank Catacombs. Uh, this is a deck building game with a modular board, so this is sort of the modular iteration of Clank, a deck building game. 
uh, this is one of our family's favorites. Uh, all of us like this game. This was designed by Paul Denon with artwork by Clay Brooks, Annika Burrell, Nate Storm, and Dan Taylor III, and published by Dire Wolf in 2022. And I actually, I don't know when the original Clank came out, but this version came out in 2022. Uh, really fun where you are moving your adventurer around the board and placing tiles as you go. You're in search of um, points, really, but, you know, artifacts and gems and you're freeing prisoners, and it's just a lot of fun. I really like the modular board concept that really added a lot to Clank, I think, which is a game we already loved. Uh, coming in at number four, another classic. It was a month of classics, uh, La Havre. This is a worker placement, and I would call it a resource conversion game. I don't. That's not really a mechanism, an official mechanism on Board Game Geek, but that's what I would call it. It was designed by Uwe Rosenberg and artwork by Clemens Franz, and published by Lookout Games in 2008. Coming in at number three, a game that was recently featured on the channel, and that's Cascadia. This is a tile placement game that was designed by Randy Flynn with artwork by Beth Sobel and published by Flat Out Games in 2021. And another one recently featured on the channel, coming in at number two, uh, and this is one of the ones that was new to me last month, um, and that is Meadow. And this is what uh, I would call a tableau builder and a bit of sec, sec well, not really a set collection, maybe a little bit of, yeah, you have set collection. Designed by Clemens Kaliki with artwork by Carolina Kijak and Katarzyna Feibiger. I'm almost certainly pronouncing this wrong. <laughs> uh, published by Rebel Studios in 2021. Uh, and Meadow is an awesome game. You should, uh, if you haven't seen it already, I did a solo playthrough, and at the end of that solo playthrough, I give my thoughts on the game. So if you want to know what I think about it, uh, you can go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, and then coming in at number one, yet another classic game, uh, and that is The Castles of Burgundy. And this is a a well-loved and well-known tile placement game designed by Stefan Feld with artwork by Jacob uh, Zhikowski and Patrick, oh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Zhidrashik, um, and published by, uh, well, this is complicated. I have the 2023 version that was published by Awakened Realms. I think it's officially called the Special Edition. Uh, the Castles of Burgundy itself was originally published in 2011, by Aaliyah and Ravensburger. Um, and then I think the version that was published by Awaken Realms in 2023 was in conjunction with Aaliyah and Ravensburger. Um, I don't have all the bells and whistles, but I do have the little miniature castles, which are kind of fun to play with. Um, so that was my number one game of March uh, of last month. And so now we're going to go on to the sort of, I don't know what to call this conglomeration other than channel relevant games. Uh, these have a nature or ecology or animal theme and they're gonna, I will present them in relative ranking and I want to be clear, even in the ones that I just ranked uh, from 1 to 10 or 10 to 1 I guess, um, they're all games that I love. Uh, I don't think I want to say that out of the 10 that I just presented that none of them is probably ranked below to me anyway, uh, rated below an eight on Board Game Geek, although I didn't write down my ratings, so I'm just kind of going on a guess. It may be that none of them's lower than a nine, actually. That may be the case. Anyway, let's go on to the channel relevant games. All right, coming in uh, at number 11, and again, I, these are all games that I really enjoy, so I could really present them in alphabetical order or box size order or any order, really. Um, I just sort of somewhat ranked them, although there was a bit of overlap in some of them. But anyway, uh, number 11 is Ecologies, and that's uh, this little card game right here. And uh, Ecologies is a, really a simulation game where you're simulating food webs uh, in the natural world. Uh, it comes down to hand management and set collection. I have only played this solo, and I will eventually feature it on the channel, uh, but I'm trying to tweak the solo mode a little bit to make it, I don't know, I, I think it can be something a little more than it is. It's perfectly fine the way it is. It's relaxing to play. I just think that the decision space could be improved just a bit. So I've been working on that. Uh, it was designed by Matt Montrose with artwork 
also by Matt Montrose and published by Montrose Biology in 2019. Um, and there are several iterations of this and expansions to this, none of which I have, but I do participate in a particular solo group on Board Game Geek, and there's a person in that group who has played all the iterations of this and liked them very much. So um, maybe I will get them someday. But anyway, that's Ecologies. Okay. Uh, coming in at number 10, and barely channel relevant, really. It gets there on theme, but the theme is very much pasted on on this one. <laughs> um, and that is uh, Kariba. This is a hand management and what is known as a rock, paper, scissors game. Uh, and that is, you have these cards that you play in, um, well, you have a circle with numbers uh, one through, I want to say it's eight, one through eight. And you have cards with different animals on them, numbered one through eight. Let's see if I can pull out one of these cards. Yeah, so for instance, the zebra is number three. We have this um, leopard coming in at number six. Anyway, uh, you collect these in your hand and you lay them down, place them, uh, play them into this circle, which is representing a watering hole. And uh, based on where you place it, you will be able to take other cards from around that circle. Um, really fun. I've played this at two players, and it's a pretty intense two-player game I really enjoy. Uh, this is designed by Reiner Knizia, one of my favorite designers, and artwork uh, by Felix Kindelan. Kindelan? Uh, published by Goliath Games in 2010. It's Kariba. I'm not going to let those stand up too long. Okay, what do we have next? Uh, Mariposas. Let's see. Oh, back here. I'm going to leave this one out because it's coming up eventually. No, we'll put it back. Okay, Mariposas. Okay, don't worry. Meadow's coming back out, but we'll put it here for now. Uh, so Mariposas is a game designed by Elizabeth Hargrave uh, with artwork by um, Indy Maverick and Matt Paquette and Company. Um, I'm not sure what role each played, but the artwork's pretty good. It's very simple, very plain, I should say, but they really do highlight the coloration on the monarch butterflies. So in Mariposas, you are, you have butterflies that you are moving up and down a board to simulate a monarch butterfly migration from Mexico going up north and then coming back and going to Mexico over the course of four generations of butterflies. Um, oh, and I should mention this is published by Alderac Entertainment Group and it was published in 2020. Uh, and so this game hasn't gotten as much love as I think it deserves. And I will say on my first play of it, I wasn't quite sure what I thought. Um, I wasn't quite sure about the decisions that were there to be made. Uh, but I played it again. I played it actually several times. I don't know, maybe half a dozen times now. Um, uh, all solo at this point, but I think it would be an excellent multiplayer game as well. Uh, and I actually really like it. It's got some very subtle or subtly tricky decisions to make um, to be able to score the most points here. And the solo game that's uh, included with the game, the solo game that's included with the game is very good. It's very good. Uh, so that's Mariposa's a set collection game. Okay, uh, what do we have next? Um, ecosystem. So, Uh, so this is, um, if it weren't for the fact that it's cards, you would call it a tile laying game. So I guess you can call it a card laying game with pattern building and a bit of set collection. Designed by Matt Simpson with artwork by Lindsay Falsone and Martina Spiel. I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, published by Genius Games in 2019. And in this game, you are laying out cards in a grid and trying to put particular cards in particular arrangements, you know, certain animals next to other animals, or maybe um, I think this one had a river that you're trying to get to be, a, you know, as long as you can make it uh, to please the dragonflies. Uh, anyway, very good, uh, very good uh, card laying game uh, ecosystem. And actually right after that, we have another iteration of that same game, and that is uh, Ecosystem Coral Reef. This is basically the same game as Ecosystem, but with different artwork on the cards. Uh, again, designed by Matt Simpson. Uh, this time, artwork by Mesa 
uh, Schumacher and Martina Spiel. Again, apologies if I'm butchering that name. Uh, published by Genius Games in 2022, this one. I actually do also have Ecosystem Savannah that I've ordered and is on its way to me, so I will eventually feature all three of these on the channel. There's a solo mode included in the box that's actually quite good that I have very much enjoyed for both of these. Okay, uh, next up we have Parks. So I played this with my family one night and then I'm planning on playing it again solo, but I'll talk about that in a, a little bit. I haven't played this one solo yet actually, but I've heard good things about the solo game. Uh, so Parks is, it's listed as a worker placement game, which I guess it is. You're moving along this track and you do get to choose where to place your hikers uh, in order to collect particular resources that will then allow you to visit parks, that is, to bring them into your, I don't know, possession, which is kind of weird when you're talking about the national parks, but anyway, it allows you to visit the national parks. And uh, the artwork is amazing. Um, I will uh, take some pictures and put them up, but they're probably flashing by you right now as we speak. This also has a variable setup, so the board that you are moving across has is made up of several different tiles that will have a different arrangement with each game you play and actually it's played over three seasons and each of those seasons will have a different arrangement of those tiles as well and each season you add one additional tile to that so um, really fun game and that's parks let's see i have to stack these up like that now i think okay Next up, ah, a couple of small box games. So uh, the first one is Peep Mats. These are uh, Peep Mutts. Uh, I saw how to pronounce it in one of the forums on Board Game Geek, and not the way that a native English speaker like myself would think to pronounce it, but Peep Mutts. Um, little Songbirds. And this is a hand management and set collection game with uh, also a bit of open drafting. And in this game, you are playing birds to a bird feeder and trying to um, basically overpower whatever bird is currently at the feeder uh, through the values on the cards. And in doing so, that bird at the feeder will then fly into your sets, right? That you can collect that bird. Really fun game. I've played this both two player and solo and very much enjoyed it both ways. I am trying to tweak the solo mode a little bit. So the solo mode that I've played is a fan-made solo mode that I got from Board Game Geek, and it's actually quite good, uh, but I managed to get to the point where I could beat it quite consistently, which isn't as much fun anymore. And so I'm trying to come up with way, a way to tweak it uh, that will make it a little bit more challenging. And so it will eventually be on the channel um, as soon as I figure that out. So uh, peep mutts. All right, and then next step, I talked about this one last month, and that is Enchanted Plumes. This is one of my favorite little card games, especially to play solo. And in this game, again, the theme for this one very much pasted on. Okay. But it has beautiful cards where you are making peacock plumes, basically these inverted triangles of peacock feathers, and scoring points based on those arrangement of cards. And in both the solo game and the multiplayer game, you're trying to do that before the peahen card comes out. And once it does, um, basically she's judging the peacock tails uh, based on your score. Uh, so that's Enchanted Plumes. All right, uh, next up, Bird Watcher. Where'd that one go? Oh, right behind me. Okay, so this one was recently on the channel as well, and in fact, the, this one and the next two after this uh, all have been on the channel really recently. And so Birdwatcher is a hand management uh, push-your-luck set collection game where you are uh, making a photo journal, or not just photographs, but you're making um, a journal of birds that you've taken pictures of and publications uh, that you have published your results in, or published your pictures in, I guess. I've played this one both two-player and solo and really liked it uh, both ways. And the solo game is very good. Now, it has gotten a lot of flack for being very hard to beat, but I think I figured out some um, key ways to approach the game to make it not quite so difficult. So if you're interested in that, uh, go ahead and take a look at my solo playthrough where I also give my detailed thoughts on the game at the end of that playthrough. So that's Bird Watcher. Uh, okay, next up is Cascadia. 
This was very recently on the channel. Um, this is a tile laying game. I already talked about this just a little bit. Uh, but this is a tile, tile laying game designed by uh, Randy Flynn with artwork by Beth Sobel, uh, published by Flat Out Games in 2021. And I just realized, I think I did not, I think I skipped some of that information starting with, I'm looking at my list, with Parks. Um, well, the information will have been up on the screen, so apologies to the designers and artists and publishers. Uh, but anyway, cast back to Cascadia. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and so I grew up hiking and camping um, throughout, uh, well, throughout the North Cascades and out on the Olympic Peninsula, and so very much in the geography that is covered by this game. And so I really enjoy it, and I've been playing through the solo scenarios, which I've been finding to be a lot of fun. Uh, so that's Cascadia. And lastly, we have Meadow. This was new to me. Uh, this was new to me. Oh, another one that was new to me last month was Peep Mutts. I didn't uh, say that. And Ecosystem and Ecosystem Coral Reef. Kariba was new to me last month, and so was Ecologies. Um, so a lot of new games uh, that are relevant to the channel most recently. Okay, so anyway, back to Meadow. I love this game. This is a really good tableau building game. Um, it is classified as worker placement on BoardGameGeek, and I guess it is. I like the way that the placement, I like the way that you place your tiles to choose cards, and that is on three sides of the board. They're numbered one through four, and you're, you have tiles numbered one through four, and then a wild tile if you're playing um, the solo game and I think also the two-player game. And based on where you put your tile, you will choose a card in that row corresponding to the number on the tile that you place. And so um, it's similar to a mechanism that is used in a game called Quadropolis, that I also really like. Uh, and the artwork here is amazing. This was designed by Clemens Kaliki with artwork by Carolina Kijak and Katarzyna Feibiger. I'm probably mispronouncing so many of these names. And published by Rebel Studio in 2021. Uh, anyway, that's Meadow. If you're interested in my detailed thoughts on that, I give them at the end of my solo playthrough uh, that was posted relatively recently on the channel. Last month, anyway. Okay, so that was those were the channel relevant games that I played in March. Uh, now I just wanted to talk a little bit about a few videos that are upcoming. Um, so definitely next on the channel will be parks and this is because we have National Park Week coming up April 20th through the 28th and you also get during that week um, specifically on April 20th uh, so if you're seeing this video in time, um, on April 20th, there is free entrance to all the national parks uh, across the United States anyway. Um, so apologies to non-United States people. But um, anyway, that's uh, I'll be featuring parks on the channel next week. And then um, for Earth Day, what better game to play <laughs> than Earth, right? Uh, and this is actually, there is an expansion that is coming to Kickstarter soon called Earth Abundance, where they're going to introduce a new mechanism, seeds, I think it is. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more about that, there's an excellent interview on the channel called Gaming Rules uh, with Paul Brogan, where he interviewed the designer, Maxime Tardif, and then also Connor Gooey, who is with Inside Up Games. I think he owns Inside Up Games, actually. And uh, so this is a ta another tableau building game that is pretty famous for its follow mechanism. And that is when you do an action, everybody else gets to do sort of a lesser version of that action. And it was, uh, like I said, designed by Maxime Tardif with artwork by M81 Studio, Connor Magui, Yulia Sosnick, and Kenneth Spond. Published by Inside Up Games in 2023. This is a game I actually kickstarted uh, way back when it was on Kickstarter. And like I said, it's a tableau building game, also has hand management, uh, pattern building, and then that famous follow mechanism, which it's not original to this game, but is done very well in this game, actually. Uh, makes it so that there's always something going on. Every player is always doing something. And I'm also, uh, will definitely have a companion blog post 
coming out about Earth. It may or may not be ready in time for the release of the video uh, because we're getting towards the end of the semester and I'm getting really busy, uh, but uh, I will have a companion blog post uh, for my blog on Board Game Geek. And then lastly, uh, upcoming video that is Arboretum. Um, so we'll see. I, Arbor Day is coming up April 26th. This obviously would be posted after that because of the way the calendar works out. Uh, I do actually already have a blog post talking briefly about Arboretum uh, and Arbor Day. And so this might be coming up after Parks and after Earth, but I'm not entirely sure. I also do have um, several games that have been uh, patron requests from uh, Patreon. Uh, and so the Patreon requests that should be coming soon on the channel, but I don't know in what order, are going to be Three Sisters, because um, it has a gardening connection, right? Uh, and then Birds of a Feather, Western North America, uh, which is actually right up here. Here's Three Sisters. Um, I haven't played Birds of a Feather yet. I just recently got that uh, used off of Board Game Geek, actually. Uh, and so I will be playing that one and hopefully featuring it on the channel soon. And then Canopy, uh, which is right back here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, right back here. And I have played that one solo and at two players, and it's a really fun game. I'm giving, giving away my thoughts on it right now. So that'll be on the channel at some point in the not-too-distant future. Waypoints, um, I'm thinking of doing a play-along uh, with Waypoints, which is a roll-and-write game where you are hiking uh, through the wilderness and climbing mountains and taking pictures and kayaking down rivers. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite roll and writes. You can get it for, it's a print and play game. You can get it for five bucks. And uh, I think it's five bucks, some, somewhere along that, somewhere in that range. Uh, so anyway, I'm thinking of doing a play along with that. So if you are interested in that, I would really love to know if that's something that you would like to see. Um, it would be pre-recorded, but then you could play along with it. That would allow you to pause it if you wanted time to think or whatever. Um, but then you could compare scores. People could post their scores uh, in the description. Or not, in, people could post their scores in the comments. Um, and then two more that have been Patreon requests, uh, Ecologies. Uh, so this one, like I said, I'm working on maybe making the solo game just a bit more interesting than it is. It's good, it's fine the way it is, but it just, I feel like the decision space could be improved just a little bit. And then, um, this one has be, been requested by a patron supporter uh, and also by others. Where is it? Oh my goodness. Okay, this is a heavy one. And that is Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. Unfortunately, it won't fit on my little table that I currently have here, so I'm working on, we're working on building, um, a slightly larger table so that I can play this one and also one I'd like to feature on the channel, which you can't see. Oh, no, yeah, I guess you can. Darwin's Journey. Uh, it's one of my favorite games and that has an excellent solo mode. Also coming soon, uh, The Fox Experiment, which I just recently ordered because there seems to be so much misunderstanding. It drives me nuts. There seems to be so much misunderstanding of the experiment that that game is based on. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. I'm certainly going to do a companion blog post on it where I can dive a little deeper into the science than, than I can do in the videos. And so the Fox experiment will be coming eventually. And then another one that just arrived in the mail, oof, another heavy one, is uh, Botany. Um, so that will eventually, see it's, it's still in shrink, you can see how shiny it is. Um, uh, this one just arrived in the mail literally a couple of days ago, uh, so I'll eventually feature this one on the channel. Okay, uh, and that was one that I kickstarted. I don't know whenever it was on Kickstarter. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention is that there is now, uh, I finished working on a solo, it's a very simple one, a solo player aid for On the Origin of Species, uh, which you can see up here. So I do have, that was the first video actually that uh, ushered in the channel on Darwin's birthday, February 12th. And so you go take a look at that if you haven't already. But I do have a solo player aid that I made for On the Origin of Species. And so a link to that file can be found in the description for the video. Now it's a real simple one. It's not fancy. There's no pictures, but it's um, structured in a way that I hope is very easy to use while you're actually playing the game. Okay, so I'm completely surrounded by games now, and uh, that's all I have for you. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!